So the first thing you all have to understand is we've kind of said this a little bit the other day, but we're going to break it down one more time. But the rules of wholesaling have changed, right? And a lot of the underlying principles we do teach are there, but we get so many new people that always come in every uh, single month. So we do try to help as many people, but the rules of wholesaling have changed, right? The old rules, you know, don't care about your cash buyer, give them the middle finger, shove them down, treat them like dirt, treat your sellers like dirt because it's all about just getting the deal. It's all about that grind, 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 uh, making the big operations and feel, looking like you're the crazy big guy in the suit, right? Th those, those rules are stupid. And these are rules and boundaries set by gurus, right? Um, it's sort of like rules and boundaries set by society, right? Society sometimes tells you you have to do this, this, or this for the rest of your life. I was told from my school teachers growing up that I was going to get a job one day and that's what I'm going to do. And it's just ingrained in your head since you're a kid, right? And when you go against society, it goes crazy, right? And the whole thing, mm -hmm. real estate society group, whatever you want to call it, uh, the community, uh, they've taught you certain ways to get into wholesaling. And they're all fundamentally wrong. And, you know, I feel like Neo in the Matrix or who's the guy in um, who's the Fishborn guy, Lawrence Fishborn, the guy with the glasses without the things. Oh, it's, uh, it's not Samuel, is it? No, no, no. Lawrence Fishburne is his name. I, oh, okay. I don't know what his don't character know. name was, but like it's a long we're trying movie. to break you out of the trap in wholesaling real estate, right? Because like these gurus just have such a stronghold on this terrible, like just terrible information. Well, that's what we're trying to share. So guys, if this is your wake up call, we're going to do, is it the blue pill or the, I think it's the red pill is the real one, right? Uh, yeah, I'm a, the blue, I, I literally watch watched the matrix like a month ago, but it's, it's, this there's, is what. There's a third one out now. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love, Keanu I haven't Reeves. seen that one, but guys, there is a quote unquote matrix out there in for wholesaling gurus. And I'm saying this respectfully, but like a lot of these gurus started wholesaling during when you started wholesaling, they learned it from their guys in the nineties and their guys in the nineties learned it from the eighties. And really it's just been the fundamentals from 2002. They stopped wholesaling. So they started guru in 2004, some in 2010. And really they just started wholesaling and they stopped wholesaling 2015, 2016 mostly. And really what they did was like, I can make more money as a guru selling courses. And so that's what they started to do. They started selling courses. Well, and then the guys, I, I'm just here to tell you, it is true that you can make more money doing it. That's why they do it. It's part of the game. Well, if you're the a bad wholesaler, then yeah. Yeah, the can. problem is you don't want to be part of this game because if I'm trying to teach you wholesaling and telling you how to do it, but like I don't do it anymore... It doesn't even make sense to me. And everyone does that. Well, you know, a football coach never played football. I'm like, dude, you're talking about 1% of the athletes in the world. I, I think 10 More to 20% of the population could do, uh, could do wholesaling. And, but the key is you got to be active. How I did it in 2004 it is today. A lot of the stuff's still true. The fundamentals, it's just the techniques and the delivery, the execution of how you do it. But it's, in my opinion, it's like everybody who started wholesaling after 2013, 14, you have this false sense of security of how wholesaling works. And I'm just telling you, it's like night and day. I agree. It's night and day. And that's my challenge is everyone 2014 on. I've watched the craziness for six or seven years. And uh, keep in mind, I'm just going to tell you, a coach is trading his time for money. End of story. I don't care what you say. That's how it goes down. We talk and to so many coaches that why are. Why don't all coaches just partner up with everybody? If they're so good at it, why not just partner up and split the deals or just, hey, listen, I'll take your first three deals. You never see that offer. You well, never, well, they go, well, you got to go through my training program, right? You've got to go through my program to get into it. We have gurus talking to us and we're not going to reveal names because they got to keep being guru, but they mention it all the time. And these are people out West, you know, they're, they're not in Florida, they're, they're out West. And they're sick of it. So let me explain. So 2000, like 2015, they stopped wholesaling. And what I want you to understand is a great guru will make more money than a good wholesaler. It, but an amazing wholesaler will make so much more money than an amazing guru. And that is how we do it. Now, you got to understand this. So in 2015, they stop it. They just teach you wholesaling. And they teach you what they learned in 2015. And they're doing it now in 2022, 2023. So you're getting information from 2015. Now, we do wholesaling in 2022. And what we do, we came back literally today from, hold on, let me, I don't want to reveal too much, but literally came back today. We were filming a, um, 
a vlog on one of the other deals. That's all, it's on your phone, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we did another forty thousand dollar deal. We we literally did a little vlog on it, and um, we don't want to reveal too much on that. But literally, it was we're just talking about the golden opportunities there. So we literally come back from doing active deals, coming back here to live stream, and just telling you how wholesaling works. Like we're just right. Like that's just how we do it. So we just understand. So I guess Morpheus is his name, which. I don't know why I forgot that, but Somebody said there's a fourth matrix on it. Yeah, there, there's a fourth one. Jesus. Yeah. So I'm just what, getting through two. I know. So what I could tell you guys is there is a blue pill and a red pill. And so the blue pill is pay me 10 grand. I'll, 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 I'll stroke your head. I'll hold you. I'll tell you it's okay. Don't worry. It's going to feel good for Give about 10 money. days. And after You're such a great person. Oh, it's okay. You didn't cold call today. Keep paying me. Yeah, it's okay. Guys, I we give you the red pill, and the red pill sucks. Okay, have you ever had a fish oil pill? Oh man, yeah, well, those things are nasty. Try, try straight up fish oil. Yeah, it's nasty. Unfortunately, that's what it tastes the like. The pill's not bad. The, the straight up oil but is. Uh... Here's the problem: it's gonna stink. You are gonna have to grind, cold call, learn wholesaling, get your hands dirty, or you have to pay some money like to do marketing. But like, it doesn't feel good. But it's what work. you're gonna learn is that red pill you're taking. Is going to open your eyes up to actually how wholesaling real estate works and how wholesaling real estate works is how every legitimate sales operation works. Cause a lot of wholesaling is sales and sales is all about people, right? You're, you're, you're not selling. I just want, want everyone to understand how sales works. You're not selling the product. You, usually you never are. You are selling what the product will do for the person. Now I'm not getting a whole sales thing, but that is what it is. So in wholesaling, you're selling yourself to actually go out here and go with you for your cash offer, right? And a lot of people get that confused about how sales work in wholesaling, especially in 2023, but it's all about what you can do for them. People are very selfish because if, it, if sales is all about what the thing is, nobody, and I'm telling you, nobody is going to go with you. They'll go with the higher cash offer or they'll go with another realtor, right? Yeah. Why do people buy iPhones? Because they want to be in their own friend group with the little blue bubbles and airdrop and just because it's better. But I that's that not the truth, right? So just, I want you guys to understand it sucks. Like taking that red pill, the red pill's free. There's FYI, it's a free one. It yeah. ain't uh, it ain't $10,000, I'll tell you that. But, but it's there. Like, honestly, a lot, the way the world works today is you're not stuck going to universities and high schools and like all these programs to get the information. That was the only, dude, I grew up in a time where you had to look stuff up in encyclopedias that was sometimes 10 years old, okay? So the rules have changed. So we're talking about like particular in wholesaling. I want you to understand is so many people think, well, if I pay that big fee, it's going to solve my problem. I promise you initially it'll feel that way. And then you're going to see this disparity gap and go, oh my God, like Zach and Rick were right. If I just did that course, I could have done it. Listen, it doesn't matter how you get there. It's where you end up and wind up. The rules have changed. I'm telling you right now, so many people Anyone who tries to tell you that wholesaling is about sales, it's about sales on the, the courses, like 100%. Well, no, no, no. it sold. is about sales. But the thing is, what I'm saying is sales is people. Correct. And that is what it is. So people think about it as sales and they think of Wolf of Wall Street. So what are people buying these days? Like what, what are they buying when you go to meet with them in their home? Are they looking for some slick Yourself. talking salesman? It's the solution you have. They're looking right? for confidence. They're looking for authenticity. And they're looking for empathy. Like, are you going to give me the dignity, even though I'm telling you all the dirt on my house? And if you don't connect with those people, there's nothing you can do to get that deal. So if you just want to do it strictly on a transaction basis is how the current rules are being taught to you right now, you are going to get killed. You have to connect with people to get their barrier down. And it's not so much about selling them. It's just about overcoming their objections you're being making them to. comfortable with you. And we got to destroy the matrix, right? And uh, that's what we're doing. The wholesaling. I'm going to, uh, so let's see. We're going to make a thing called the wholesaling matrix. Yeah. It's going to be hilarious, but it is absolutely true. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because we have gurus contact us all the time and we, we don't break it down too much, but uh, I can't really get too much of the information, but they're out West and they're sick of it. They do five, six, seven, eight hours of zooms a day and they're making a million two million dollars i'm making a ton of money god oh, bless you man for wholesaling it's so much better but like they're making two million dollars but they have to spend 9 a.m to 5 p.m it's a weird time on zoom calls 
9 a.m. to 5 a.m. And they get paid a certain amount of money per Zoom call, which makes them a employee to themselves, right? It's like whatever time, every time work. I had one guy come up to me, a power washer, and I love the power washing industry, right? The guy talking about he's an entrepreneur, and I'm like, like it's like 30 bucks an hour as an entrepreneur. Like entrepreneurs, when you got someone in the power washing doing the stuff for you, if you're yeah, doing yeah. it yourself, it's not. So, guys, these gurus, they contact us all the time. Like, Zach, how can I start doing what you're doing? So I don't have to do this. I, I'm so sick of this because everyone asks like, how, how much time do you spend on content? And I'm like, okay, so on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, two hours. So that's six, another three hours for videos, nine. And then maybe if I have to edit 12, 15 hours at most, but really it's like 12. And they're like, oh, I spend 50 hours a week on Zooms. And I'm like, and so people are just like, whoa, right? And the honest truth is you make so much more money in wholesaling real estate. And what we're trying to break down is the people you're listening to are trying to get out of coaching. They're getting paid per hour and they don't wholesale. Like guys, it, it drives me crazy. Like when I tell you to grind and grind it out, that it sucks. I know what it's like. Let me give you a quick example. That's the this truth, Tuesday, right? this Tuesday, uh, what two days ago, watch my live stream. I cold called for an hour and 45 minutes and got zilch, nothing. I got crazy people wanting too much money for that. I did Arizona, okay, and Connecticut. Holy moly, those people were nuts. They, they want so much for the house. They're wild, insane. I was like going crazy. No one answered their phone. Some people answered the phone, but I was like, oh my, and this sucked, okay? But guess what happened the last call I did? Just I'm like, you know what? Let's just do one more. $70,000 price reduction. $70,000 price reduction, last deal. And the guy was sick of it. And he owned four of the properties. You know, I, I, here, here's the truth of the problem. It's live. Go, go to the channel and uh, watch it. This is why we do the lives. Because you need the information like yesterday. You don't need people talking into a teleprompter. Listen, we do some nice videos. But no teleprompter. It, it's really never. I don't even know what one looks like. It's, it's stuff to a teachable lesson. But when we're talking about the stuff today, if you guys aren't getting it live, you are way behind the eight ball. Number two, we're transparent. Like we're not, I mean, we have our points here, you but see we're my telling struggle. you the truth. You see the struggles in those lives. So here's the, here's the difference is you can either have somebody go on the internet, YouTube, whatever, and they can tell you how to do it. Or then there's the people that are going to show you how they do it in their business. And there is a tremendous difference in your buy-in. So we could sit here and listen to theory all day long, recorded like sales calls. Why do you think he does live sales calls? Because he gets his teeth kicked in just like you, but he keeps going. And that's the key with it. So many gurus yeah, are so stopped. scared of like how they're going to be viewed, dude. Like people are regular, man. I got issues. He's got, everybody's got issues. Everybody pretends like they're perfect. And it's like, so like he stepped perfect. on an ampile today. I got destroyed in an ampile. I will, we will break down. It will be on the flip of their channel. He painful. stepped on a ampile. You guys know during, how bad when it he is. was talking they got deep in the shoe getting, in the socks. You were getting so amped talking about this deal and then the ampile. Like, I went ah. nuts, dude. Oh my God. And he filmed the whole thing. I, it's all, it's going to be on the channel. Don't worry about it. But, but what like, I'm saying perfect, is yeah. you, you have people that if someone's so busy telling you how to do it, Go find someone that's actually doing it and follow their journey because everything we do is speak from experience. And God knows I got a lot of experience. He has an amazing amount of experience. And this is the difference I see in the wholesaling. The rules have changed because when someone lectures to you and they think they're better than you and like, this is how I do it. You have to, this is, this is what I do. This is theory like what I do. And like, Hey dude, Let's go to property. Let's show you how it's done. Let's get rid of the editors. Let's just film stuff and be raw and authentic. Dude, either you connect with me or not. I don't like, honestly, I don't care if you want to go on the wholesaling journey. Why not take it from people that are being true and authentic? Now, if I'm going to be true and authentic, then I want you to resonate with it. So you can go back to your sellers and do the same thing. Because the number one comment I got when I was in the heat of the fire doing all the appointments is you just feel like a real guy. I, I, I get you. And I would get significant discounts over people paying more because I connected with people. You pulled up on those deals with the Honda Accord and that helped, right? Honestly, in the, in the first year I walked out, I go, I cannot believe people will sell me a house. No, no, no. All right, all right. Let's talk about 2005, 2006, all right? Because I remember when I was a little kid. What car, you know this, the white car, did you pull up and do a bunch of deals in 2007 and six? 
was it the the big the big the white oh yeah i bought i once so i got a little cute no 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 i'm talking about 2005 2006 was it the van or the, the big truck the minivan oh, you the... closed deals in a minivan Oh, that was bad. You pulled up in a minivan starting out in wholesaling and closed deals. Because he's throwing food and wrappers, everything he in the back. He closed deals in a minivan. So, like, it doesn't matter oh, what I you pull care. up in. But no, I, did the seller care? No, they don't. They don't. They could care. The only time the seller cares if you show up in a super slick car. I know. It will actually create problems for you. So, back in the old days, guys, <clears throat> you used to be able to buy a car for $1,000, $1, $1,200, all beat up. I knew other wholesalers. That's what they did. And they only used that car to drive to appointments yeah. because the humble guy, the regular Joe blow that can connect with people, the sellers will connect with it. If you are, if you talk above the seller, you know, the people go, do you know who I am? It does not work in this business. They want to go, listen, are you going to give me the dignity? Or are you going to help me out? And do you know what you're talking about? And can I connect with you? Like, would I go and have dinner with you or would I go get a cup of coffee or grab a beer with you? And if they can't answer that, I don't know about you, but I've learned long time ago and I've, I've dealt with a lot of people. If there's someone I wouldn't go and grab a beer with or get a coffee with or have over to my house dinner with my family, I'm not going to be any well, type of business this. partner with you. They've, um, they've pretty much found the last... And I don't want to get political. The last 10 presidents, they've polled every American and they've done the craziest polls of who it will most likely win the presidency. And it comes down to one question for men, not really women, but for yeah. men who, who men will vote for. No political, like from Democrats and Republicans, what is the number one question you have to ask to see if this guy's going to be president or not? Ready? Will I have a beer with this person? That is the number one question for yeah. men of why they'll choose for president, not policy. This isn't about like policy, no. left, right, middle. Will, could I have a beer with that person? This is why I'm not getting political. This is why uh, JFK won. That is clearly why Clinton won. That's why George, the both Bushes won. That's why Jimmy Carter won. That's why Reagan won. That's why all these presidents won. That's why Obama won. That's why I can't say the other one because the last president before this president, that word is actually a keyword that gets me in trouble. I can't even say the current one because that gets me in trouble. But those past ones, They've done studies and those people, men said, I'd want to have a beer with that person. And they have won. And they show up on video. Has, Obama did sat down, had like beers with people. And it just goes to show every president does that now. But I'm just showing you yeah. like that is how human beings, Americans choose who's going to be the leader and who have all the codes and lead they don't the military. care what car you pull up in no. anything like that is like. How can I connect with but that's so men? Women are a little different, but I'm just talking about for men like it's. Just under like it's not about how slick of a talker you are either. Like I tell you, George Bush wasn't the most slickest talker, right? Yeah. But he got he with two terms, right? I just like so here's a little trick. So when I'm when we're dealing with sellers, and remember, you got to get down to business on the negotiations. When you're done with your negotiations and you get what you want, and they still want to hang out with you, you have done a phenomenal job doing it. Because a lot of times we run the risk of people changing their mind and stuff like that, and then when we get deep in the report, I tell people, take a time out, do a transition, get into what you're there for, get into negotiations. And then at the end, if you want to hang out and talk or maybe even like, uh, you know, grab a bite to eat or something, you can do that. It like, it is the final endorsement of like, okay, I've won. And if you're not having sellers doing that, you're missing the point because maybe you follow rules of people who are lecturing you, telling you what to do instead of, hey, let me show you how I do it. Here's how we make a cold call. And matter of fact, why don't I just do it live? That's the point. That's and that's it, guys. I'm just telling you. So when you look at people and if they try to raise themselves on a pedestal and they're better than you, nobody is better than anyone else. It's I don't care if you got $50 billion. You are no better than the person to the left or right of you. And your sellers know that. And the minute you think you're just super tough and you're invincible, you will not relate to people and you better go find people and you better teach them how to relate with people or you're going to get killed in this business. These rules of like going through high quantity, huge things of data and just being a robot. Listen, the initial screening, I get it. But when you connect with these people, you've got to make it real. Authenticity and empathy rules in today's market. I will tell you the predominant coaching in wholesaling is the opposite. It's a numbers game. You got to drive, 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 drive. It's ridiculous, guys. Slow down, help these people out, dig through your leads, get your list. Like today we were out, we were just looking on one deal and like, I go, hey, what about this house here? What about this one? 
And like, we got excited. I'm like, oh my God. I go, I love well, we this We don't want to business. spoil the video. Yeah, I know. But like, I'll tell you, we, we did some cool drawing. So we did a deal there and we basically told everyone, we'll give a little spoiler. Every single time we have a really good deal, if we drive for do dollars for 15 minutes, we'll probably get 15 really good drawing for dollars. Leads and most likely a deal out of that. Yeah. Uh, we spent 30 minutes and I think got 25, 30 drawing for dollars. And we recorded the whole thing. It'd be pretty cool. But I'm just letting you guys know that's what it is. So what is the key? Why the rules have changed? What are the rules? Guys, we have Wu-Tang behind us. The reason why I chose Wu-Tang for the background today, number one, because you don't listen to Wu-Tang. So I'm trying to get in the list. I, 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 I probably did but when I was younger. You do. I don't know. But Wu-Tang in the 90s kept it real. They rapped about what real life was in New York and they kept it real. No crazy melodies. No crazy like, what are the people? They just kept it legit. You don't and want that's me why rapping. they're amazing. Okay. That is why they're awesome. So I'm telling you straight up, guys. You have to keep it 100. You have to keep it legit. You have to be you. You can't be somebody else. You have to be yourself. So let's get sort of get into how to crush your competition. We've kind of talked about it a little more. But how do you beat your competition, right? There, there's so many ways to be doing this and ways that we can really go with this. We kind of talked about the number one way. Why have I always crushed all of my competition when I have a deal? So when we have a deal and there's like six other wholesalers trying to get that deal, following everything like that, where's the number one rule I, we did to succeed? Number one, every single time we got the lead, we set the appointment, not when I felt like it or when it was convenient. I actually made it super inconvenient. I made it as fast as, as soon as I can, I'd go meet the person. I don't even care. Like I never cared. Like, oh shoot, I gotta go work out. I don't know, work out, going, right? Like yeah. guys, you have to go on the appointment as soon as you possibly can. Now things have changed a little from then. Uh, motivation's more important, but still even in a saturated market, you got to set that appointment as soon as possible. And the most important about, part about that, set the appointment with conditioning them. If you cannot condition them, it's not an appointment. They have to be ready to make a yes or no decision on selling the property once you go there. If you can do that, you will, number one, beat your competition. Because the reason why your competition didn't beat, like my competition didn't beat me is because I just, I got the contract before they did. Yeah. Always, right? And it's always the guy like, oh, can, can you close it right now? And they feel, they, no, hey, let me go by and see it. That's it. Are you ready to make a decision on selling it? Or are you just serious about selling this? Or yeah. am I wasting my time? Because I always won because I went on there as soon as possible. I wasn't a better talker. I wasn't smarter. I wasn't the sl Starting out, I was not the slickest person with the sales, right? But I always just showed up and I showed up quick and on time. And that won me. That won me the appointments, right? And that is always the truth. I think so many people get it over their head like, oh, Zach, I have an accent. This is not good. Go on the appointment faster then, right? Like there's things you can overcome if you think you have a struggle with something. And I've always destroyed my competition from that because number one, everyone thinks if you want to beat your competition, you have better prices. And that's never the thing. Talking about the iPhone, right? Mm. Are iPhones cheaper or more expensive than Androids? There's some very expensive Androids, but overall. They're more expensive. They're more expensive. Does Apple, Trust me, I know, that. I know. Does Apple crush <laughs> their competition though? Pretty yeah. much. Hands and down. Why is that? They don't get the market share, but their prices are so high. They make more profits than anyone else because it's about the product. It's about the person. It's about how someone feels when they go with it, not because of the price. No. The price is not the thing. So how do I beat my competition? I don't focus on being the, the high. So it's kind of flipped right with wholesaling. The cheap guys are the ones that always offer the highest. I always offer the lowest. I'm the most expensive for my seller, but they know 100% Rest assured, I have my buyers, I'm ready to go, and I will get the deal done, right? Yeah. I'm a man of my word. And I have confidence I can help you out, and I will help you out. Guys, I'm faster than everyone else, especially when I starting out, and still, when I used to go on appointments, number one. Number two, I was never the highest offer, never. But I was the most certain one. And I knew how to talk, and I knew how to get someone to say yes or no decision. Because once you get someone to agree to make a yes or no decision, you got them right there. You just got to make them no. do a yes or no, right? Guys, keep in mind the number one thing a motivated seller wants, a motivated seller, I'm not talking about a retail, they want certainty. They want it done. They don't want to think about it anymore. So remember, you can't strike a great wholesale deal unless the motivation's there. And their number one thing is they have anxiety about the property. They don't want to give it away. Don't get me wrong. Like you're going to have to haggle on it a little bit, but they're looking for the person that is a 100% guarantee. And that's the biggest thing that you are selling at yourself and your confidence. So here's a little trick. I'm just going to tell you, 
you should be your own competition, meaning you only have to rise to your level because if you look at all the other people, you go to local RIAs and stuff like that, you're not going to get excited about your competition because it's all talk. So don't try to elevate above them. You just set the standard on your own. Go faster to the appointments. Respond quicker. Be yourself. Be authentic. And if you don't know the answer, go get the answer and just be transparent and honest with them. I'm telling you, what if, you, if you're looking, I have so much competition, you're, you're not getting the point of it. Yeah. You have to be so above your competition, you could care less. I could care less what our local competition does because I know how they operate and I'm constantly uh, trying to push the envelope of what we do. So it's I agree. It, it's so funny though. The only competition is really yourself. Like you are in race. Look at it as like you're a marathon runner. You're just trying to beat each day by a few more seconds. Yeah. So that's how you beat them. So if you're in a saturated market, right? How do you win? Right. So I think number one, like this is super, super duper important, but like you gotta go faster than your competition. Speed kills. Speed kills it. And guys, if it was all about price in a saturated market. The highest bidder would always win mm -hmm. and it'd always be listed with a realtor. There's a reason why they want to take a discount. Once they decide they want to take a discount, it doesn't really matter, right? And just that, that's the truth. And so many people get caught up on the price, the perfect offer. You got, so many people get so stressed out over it. And the problem I have with competition and you know saturated markets is competition is always when you're in the same boat. And what do I mean by that? If everyone's cold calling the uh, tax lien list, yes, there's competition, right? If everybody's texting a pre-foreclosure list, yes, there's competition. But my favorite thing to do in a saturated market and in a quote-unquote competitive market is earning my list. And so many people just, they buy the list and they think that's like it. Guys, you have to earn your list. How do you earn a list? Number one is drawing for dollars, right? Reverse drawing for dollars. Number three is like just getting the water shutoff list, getting the fire damage property list. The super duper difficult list to pull, you earned it, okay? You earned that list. And once you earn that list, your competition can't pull it. And that is how you destroy it. It's just like, I don't like the analogy of shooting fish in a barrel because I think it's stupid, but I'd really go catch a fish. But like, that's what it is. Because if you seriously are the only one going after that list, there's no competition. And it's virtually nothing, right? I agree. And- I think a lot of people look at competition as a bad way. Every single appointment I've ever been on in the past three years, there's always five or six wholesalers. Always. Always higher offers. Always this, always this. I didn't care. Because like, are they there right now? Yeah. Are they ready to make an offer? Do they have a contract? Do they have EMD ready to go? Never, right? And so I never cared. I always cared about helping the person out. And that is how you win. That's how you do it. But you got to earn your lists. And I think one thing a lot of people get really stressed out over, you know, is just getting the perfect list. Getting our, it's, you're not going to be perfect. You guys, when I have my live cold call Tuesday, I'm not perfect, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I ain't bad, <laughs> but I ain't perfect, okay? And the one thing you can figure out is I'm, I'm probably one of the best cold callers out there, and I am not perfect. I'm not the best cold caller when it comes to being the slickest or something like that, no, but I can connect with people, and I can bring out my genuine personality with the seller and I, y'all know like I ain't the slickest person when it comes to just acting like a sales I just regular person right I'm a regular Joe regular Zach I don't know how to say it the right way but like that's how you do it so I think that's a really important strategy uh, the next one here is sharing the wealth and I think so many people in this new economy for wholesaling real estate they're so greedy and I, I'm just being completely honest and I always call gurus greedy for charging all this money but like so many wholesalers are like Oh, I gotta hoard my cash buyers list. I don't. Want, I don't want to help well, anyone. I, I can't give away my secrets. Oh uh, yeah. Because I've spent so much time. Listen, everybody learned from somebody. Yeah. If you think any guru, me, Zach, like we invented everything ourselves, all we did is take what other people did, and we find a better way to do it. And you know what? Me and Zach are counting for people on this stream to take what we do, and even make it better. Because oh, we yeah. all win when we do that. But. I want you guys to understand we're talking about the rules have changed. Wholesaling was always a basic skill set to get started in real estate investing. To me, it's the most important skill set because if you can learn how to make money with little to none of your own money and just make it grow and prosper and minimize the risk, your options are unlimited in real estate. But if you don't start with that core skill set and you have a guru or someone say, hey, listen, do this because it's easier than wholesaling. That's the trap you're going into. 
There is no easy way out. You have to put in the work. I don't care what industry you are, unless you have some God given ability, like you have an amazing voice or something that God bless you, but they still have to put in the work yeah. and you have to understand that. So you know that wholesaling is a basic skill set. That honestly, it takes a concentrated three to six month effort. Okay. Gurus know this. It's a basic skill set, guys. I'm sharing it. I'm sharing the wealth. I don't think we should even charge for it because it's so ridiculously easy and yeah. nobody wants you to know that. So listen, I can't stop what other people are going to do. I can just change the way the business works. So we're on a huge movement. I know we have a lot of people that hate what we do, but I'm not screwing their business up. They're not just changing with the times. Remember there, we all, everyone used to, you know, well, my parents used to have like a landline and that's how we talk to everyone. Look where we are now. My God, could you imagine if we all stuck to the landline, things change and you have to change with it. This is the best way me and Zach can have the biggest impact on everybody. And if I sat here and charged everyone for every little nickel and dime, it's ridiculous. So this is how you create a legacy. So share the wealth. Why do we have to guard it? I'm not teaching you like tw 20 different techniques on how to do every real estate investing. We're teaching how to get started because that is the biggest obstacle you guys have to overcome. How do I get started? How do I get to it? The best way is go find a deal, make it work, make the money, and then repeat it. Get up to your first hundred grand. Then you can decide how you want to scale your business and the things you want to do. And But so many people want to sell you the entire doctorate course, Evergreen, uh, Lifetime. And to me, it's just like, let's see if we get started. If we know there's a 95% failure rate, let's go help yeah. the 5% of the people want to hit it out of the park. It's just the truth. Wholesalers will tell you they can help everyone. They can't. Not wholesaling coaches. And that's the problem is we're going to give you the red. Is it the red pill? Red pill. Yeah. You got to do the work. So if yeah, I charge you 10 grand, I'm going to say, Zach, you can do it. You can, because you know what? He's already got the 10 K. Yeah. Does he really care if you succeed or not? Because he's already got the money in his bank account. If you succeed or not, there's no buy-in for this person. True. It's just the truth. It's like, I can find. So if I can find a hundred people, I know 90 to 95 are going to fail. And then I'm going to have five uh, testimonials. This is the reason why all testimonials are handpicked in these things. So if you ever want to get a true depth of any type of product, Look at all the testimonials. You can't just look at the positive and like we all look at it and you find out which way it's going. So. Yeah. And what else I mean by share the wealth is a lot of you guys are just, you know, you think of your competition as terrible evil, but like find a way to make money with them, right? Yeah, partner. Even up. our competition, like I figure a way to make money all the time with them, right? Because sometimes I have a buyer, uh, I have a buyer that they need help with. And then mm -hmm. sometimes they have a buyer I need help with and we'll make a ton of money, right? Yeah. Um, I have a lot of new people in, that come to me in Port St. Lucie and like how to get started. And I'm like, well, I ain't going to give you my best stuff. And that's probably mean, but still I say, well, you know what? Here are some places, here are some neighborhoods, drive for dollars and we can split the deal. And by the way, everyone's come to our market, like everyone, but I make you can money come, from but I'm just telling you, like you have to beat us. And that's the challenge. I love when people say, oh, I just come there. It's, it doesn't work like that anymore. Guys, it's. Yeah. Some people do well though. Like I had a guy come into our market. Uh, he wanted JV with us and they made $60,000 on the assignment fee. Yeah. And I think we made 10, but they're not a big deal. But like, there's people that do it virtually. What I mean by that though is like, if there's somebody new is coming up to you, don't like just get them, just, just shove them away. Like don't do it. Cause no. they're going to go learn our course yeah. and they're going to learn how to do it either way. Like Keep they're going to learn yeah. how to, they're going to learn how to wholesale in your market either way. So what I mean by this, why don't you share some of the wealth they're going to make though? So if go ahead. So remember what we talked earlier, we're talking about how the rules change wholesaling. Anyone who thinks they're above you, be very wary because they're doing it for positioning themselves most likely to take advantage of you to sell you something. It's just the truth. Let me give you an example. Why does one guy have to wear a jacket in the room? Like why? They do it because studies tell them it seems like they're important. And if someone thinks they're more important to you, why on heck on earth would you even network? Like it just that uh, you guys ever been around you're like, do you know who I am? Or you're like, do you know who my dad is? It drives me nuts. So we're talking about the rules changing in wholesaling. When I started in wholesaling, it was common practice for wholesalers to work together. Okay. I was really good at finding motivated sellers. I sucked at finding cash buyers. I find people with deep cash buyers list. And we had a blast for about seven or eight years. Somewhere it changed. And it's when 
the uh, the mortgage meltdown happened. And then a new wave of wholesalers came. And now it's like, don't ever work with another wholesaler. All we want to do is like screw each other over. And I'm just telling you, we have to go back to a world where wholesalers actually work together. He's great at a cash buyer's list. I'm great at finding motivated sellers. Let's work together and split the deals. But for a long run, I would have the motivated seller. And then I would have a cash buyer saying, I get 70% of the deal. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense to me. So I don't know how these rules got changed. Guys, you tell me in the comments, do you work with other wholesalers? Because that's, that's those days are like say. tough, man. Like, and when I started out, I wouldn't have survived probably without those wholesalers, to be honest with you, because I couldn't figure out how to do cash buyers. I spent so much time on motivated sellers. So the rules have changed. I think we need to go back to having wholesalers work together, especially during these market shifts. It's more important we network and help each other right now. And guys, I'm talking about organic networking. I connect with you. We make money off each other. A paid mastermind and stuff, that's good for theory, but it's not going to help you out in your local business. It's going to yeah. make you feel good temporarily. I agree. But it's not going to give you anything to fix your current issues. So that's what that's what I'm talking about. So if you could find something that's brand new, they're going to learn freewholesaling.com. So like they're going to get the secrets. Just everyone gets everyone gets everybody the secrets gets it. There's no more secrets. Everyone, if you want the money and you want to work hard, you can do it. So why don't you still share the wealth wealth with them? So if they're if they're on the come up, they're going to probably if they're going to be really good, they're going to be good no matter what. It's like I love because NBA players and NFL players do this all the time. If I see a new up and coming athlete. Like if I see a Kobe Bryant who's 18 and if I'm like a Michael Jordan type guy, I'm not going to be like, I don't want to teach him basketball because he might be better than me. He He's going to get good no matter <laughs> what. So why don't you go train with the guy and then maybe you could share some knowledge together. Right. And that's sort of the point. It's like, if they're going to be good wholesalers, they're going to like, there's nothing you're going to do to stop them. There's not one piece of information that's going to change everything. So why don't, if they're starting out, be like, Hey, here's some good places to drive for dollars. Just split the deals with us. I'll close it. Cause you need help closing and we can split some deals for a little bit. You could make one, two, three hundred thousand $300,000 and just share the wealth. You got four or five of those people going on. It's money, right? I, I teach everyone. Like you have to share the wealth. It would change your mindset with a lot of things and you'll be good, but it's so important. Um, but yeah, like you said, these gurus, yeah. they drive me crazy. So we anybody who starts a conversation with you to go, do you know who I am? I want you to go like this. You don't know who you are. Do you want me to look it up for you? It just drives me nuts when people go, do you know who oh, I am? It, it, I, it's a, it's a, they're trying to downplay you. Like I'm, I'm here. You're there. I know. Well, we, we, you're, but you can't, the, the problem is if you're going to network with people, it's hard to do it when you start out with that. So the best way to network with someone is just say, just use your ears and listen to them and be a student. And it, you don't have to take in all the information, but take the stuff that works for you. I agree. So the next one here is to get out of your own head, uh -oh. and get out of your own way. I think so many people, they get so caught up in how they think they look or sound or do. It, it stops them from being successful. And I want you guys to understand how wholesaling works now. This is not 1984. This is not 1983 where- You taking maybe, a dig on me there? Or? No, but like <laughs> there were different times, right? So if you maybe, uh, I don't know, it, like if you were a kid starting out in business, you weren't as respected as it is now, right? Um, you weren't probably as respected if you, like, I'm just like- it's true, right? Like you probably won't be, some people aren't going to be as respected in the eighties as they are now. And like, so if I go to, let's say Alabama and I have, you know, uh, I'm from Pakistan, I have an accent in the eighties, I'm probably not going to get a deal. Some people are just, it's different times, right? They're not mm -hmm. used to that. It's normal now. Like guys, I think I got one guy told me, he's like, Oh, I have a Spanish accent. And I'm like, dude, you live in Broward County. No one's going to care. Okay. And so many people get in their own heads. Like, Oh, I have an accent. Guys, this is 2023. Nobody cares if you have an accent. Okay. And I, I've told everyone the richest people in real estate have accents, right? That Swedish guy, that realtor who makes $50 million a year. Yep. His Swedish accent. Yeah. He, sh he wasn't born in New York. No one cares. Like, oh, but wouldn't they care if I wasn't born in Missouri? No, nobody cares. Okay. Like, it's just, it's normalized, right? And I just think so many people get in their own head of why they can't get the deal. And it's, nobody cares. Yeah. It's confidence. Let, let me give you an example. Have you ever heard your own voice recorded? You go, oh my worst. God. But here's the weird thing is he thinks the same. I think the same. And you guys think the same. And like, we're two guys on camera talking live in front of you, telling you how weird our voice sounds on video. So if we think it's weird, I want you to understand it's completely normal. 
If I it. let that get in the way of us giving you guys content, we would not be having this connection and you guys wouldn't get all this information for free. So get out of your own head. He used to tell me, he goes, stop worrying about what you do. Let's just shoot the videos and give them what they want. And that's all we do. But yeah, guys, you got to get out of your own head and out of your way. Once you just start doing, it works so much better. And you know, every time you start thinking like, what do I mean by getting your own head? In a two hour cold calling session, you can get in your head sometimes. You're like, you know, let's just stop calling. Right? We beat, we beat gotta, ourselves gotta, up more than anybody. That. You got to do it right. And the truth is, get out of your own head and wait. Hey, you committed to two hours. You're going to do the full two hours. And since I committed to it, I got the deal. I, I, don't, I, I don't, I make my schedule. I stick to it. Okay. Like if I don't do that, then how am I going to expect you guys to do it? Right. And so I, I did it and got a great deal at the end. I just, it's the truth. And that's what it is. So the next part here, something I always teach everyone really well, but to lowball. And specifically for lowballing is to go for no. Guys, you have to go for no, right? It's more critical now than ever. You could have got away with your current instruction from 2013, maybe even part of 2022. But I'm telling you guys, this one is coming back for real. Mm -hmm. Go for no is you've got to find the bottom line price, the deepest discount you can get because you don't know where the end price is going to lie and you have to have room. The good thing in wholesaling is, we're typically moving a property in 30 days or less, so it can't drop too far on you. But the bigger the spread you get, the more options you get. The biggest problem people have had in the last five or six years, you guys just pay too much for properties and you expect the cash buyer to bail you out. Those days are over. So you're more important now to go for no. You, and if you guys have never heard of this, it means when you make your initial offer, you want to get a no. If you get a yes, you should fear how much you just paid for it. So if you get a no... The idea is to get a counter back to them so you can get to a price that's going to work for both parties. It's going to work for you. It's going to work for the seller. And more importantly, it's going to work for your cash buyer. You have to figure this out. Go for no. Yeah, guys. So going for no is giving an offer and going for them to say no. Correct. The goal of the offer is for them to say no to it. And once you start doing that, you're going to make more money. So like, how do you get rich? Like, just increase the amount of money per deal. Right? I think everyone thinks it's a crazy algorithm how much money you make in wholesaling. It is literally how many deals you do multiplied by what's the average profit per deal. Mm -hmm. How do you double your income? I promise you, it is easier going from an average of $10,000 deals to $20,000 deals. And then, all right, let's, all, let's say you do a deal a month and you're making 10K a deal. So you're making 120K a year. It is so much easier to do uh, 20K per deal and then do 10 deals versus and just doubling per profit or doing 20 deals. It's so much easier just increasing the margins than to actually increase the amount of deals you do, right? Yeah. You, you got to double your output. And if you're spending 40 hours a week cold calling, you're going to have to double that. Like, it's stupid. Yeah, if, you, if you had 100 people, if you had to take a dollar from 100, so if you took a dollar from 100 people and made $100, you, have, you would have to bat 100%. Or if you just took $20 from five people, it would be the same result with so much less work. And you guys got to understand sure. that it, it's, it's, do you want to just sit there and beat your brains out over a hundred people or just go find the motivated sellers like me and Zach always tell you and go get the spreads and they'll hug you and they'll thank you and you'll walk away better and your cash buyers are happy and it's a win-win. You guys struggle the most when you're just, you're making offers on everything and you think getting that contract. And the reality is the gurus created this mess the truth comes out when you give it to your cash buyer on your 10th or 12th cash buyer. You're like, Hey, Rick and Zach, I'm really struggling to sell this deals. I don't even have to know what the problem is. I'm going to tell you, you paid too much for yeah. it. Hey, did you go for no? No, I took the first offer they would take. And that's 90% of the problem with this business. And for the last five to seven years, everyone's got to pass on it. It's coming back to haunt all these people, all these programs. You have to go for no. If someone doesn't teach you to go for a no, you are going to have to like bat a hundred percent. I agree. So the next one here is we've kind of said this in the beginning, but focus on the people and the problem, not the sale or the house. Don't be like, Oh my gosh, you gotta get this person to agree to it. guys. You're not supposed to force somebody to want to. Say, I always get this question. All the time. This is the worst question. Mm -hmm. I, I never say there's a bad question, but this is the closest thing to it. How do I convince somebody to go with my offer? Or how do I convince somebody to sell their house for you know 50K uh, below what it's worth? You don't convince somebody. Either they want to sell it for that or they don't. Like it, it's, it's never good, right? Like if you have to convince somebody to go out on a date with you, it's usually not good, right? You and, can't and that, convince that's, somebody. 
So you guys like it's either if, organic. If you force right? on, that's why they're calling you the day before. They don't want to go on the date on you. And for those of you putting on a contract and people keep falling out, you didn't like you tried to force it. Every now and then it happens, but if you have a high fallout ratio, it just means you did not you did not do a good enough job to make your seller feel comfortable with you. How do you make them feel comfortable? Be yourself, be authentic, be um, be empathetic. And I hear a lot of this business. We talk about the rules change. Uh, Wholesaling is all about speed and convenience. Dude, the speed part is somewhat correct. Convenience. It I, is because it's cash, but you got to remember. You're leaving out what, the most important part. But if you don't include the people with that, it's done. Correct. If you can't be empathetic and help them out and go, listen, I'm here to help you. Because when you start at speed and convenience, you sound like a check cashing store. Check, next, check, next, next, check, yeah. next. And what, so if I'm in a check capping store and I use the same velocity, I'm like, what's going on? Why do we need to do this pay loan type of deal? That's what you have to do. But yeah. we're trying to turn this business into like a cash convenience store. I get it. But honestly, you're missing the part of it. Listen, real estate is nothing more than a symptom of human problems. Okay. The reality is we're dealing with people and their emotions and what's going on and life, life has changes. You all know that. And we're just trying to help them. The real estate is just a symptom. So the real estate is the mathematical problem. You need to connect with these people and really get into the inner core of what's going on and help them. And the biggest thing, speed, convenience, eh, dignity is what most of these people want. Because when you go in a, in a train wrecked house with a lot of things going on and there, there's uh, people have passed away and stuff like that. The number one thing they want is dignity from you. And if you can't give it to them, the rest doesn't matter. And for the last seven years, we've skipped this part. I'm guys here to tell you, like, connect with them. If you've ever had the ability to sat and cry with a seller, you're an incredible person. And it's just the truth. I have. It's just the type of person I am. I know he's done it a lot of times. I've seen some crazy stuff happen. But if your sellers hug you and they go, you're the greatest thing, you did your job. And that's the piece we're making. Speed and convenience Dude, it's like an algebra problem uh, when you're missing some of the data. Like you will not succeed yeah. on that alone. I think so many people take the human element out of real estate and it's 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 so bad because- It is the main element. A lot of the gurus are like that. You know, it's the problem with the gurus is they're so fake and it's not authentic. And like, it's not about the people. Like someone do a video and it's all about how I can get you to sign up for my course at the end or, or sign up for this guy's thing. Guys, if you act like that, because you learn from those people, then you start- acting like them and you start acting like all fake and crazy you get crazy eyebrow things going and like you're trying to pretend like you're like act it, they're all acting listen if they're authentic, just, authentic just if your program is amazing and it's the, what you say it is just put a link and let people click onto it why do we have salespeople trying to close you paying them 15 20 percent commission i've never sold anyone on freelancing.com it's the it's the number one course by signups and i don't convince people to do it yeah i say it's free Go check it out. You don't have to, but it's it's attractive because it gets results. No. But what one thing I could tell you guys is you have to focus on the people. Do not pretend like you're somebody you're not. Seriously. Act like you're yourself and actually care. And if you actually care about people, which unless you're a sociopath, is that what like you're kind of right. you're disconnected from emotions with people? Uh, unless you're like that, which most people aren't, you'll be fine in this business. So the last and most important part is a lot of people feel like people act like you have to work um, twice as hard to make twice as much money. And the truth is your competition is going to zig and you got to zag, right? So your competition is going to focus on most likely pulling more lists and doing more volume to double their deals and make more money. And all you have to do to beat your competition is double the effort you spend on your follow-ups and with people on the amount of times you're talking to sellers, the amount of times you're on the phone to seller and double the amount of time you're following up. I promise you, if you to, if you double the effort you take on just the people and not double on the list or anything like that, you will make double the money and your competition is not going to be able to, they might get 10% more 20, but it, if you just focus more on the people, you'll win every single time. And this is something that nobody ever talks about. We talk about it and that is our biggest secret. And maybe our competition is going to use this. I don't care. You can't replicate me caring about somebody. Okay. Cause we know from our heart is genuine. Not mo most wholesalers can't do that. Most wholesalers can't. Um, and if you can do it, you will get rich. And so many people don't understand that. You know, everyone talks about Grant Cardone, right? And how Grant Cardone's like the slick sales guy. He's not. He's sometimes with it a little, but like 
he, he he's a people person too, right? And I think so many people look at the greatest salespeople in real estate. It's all about people and it's never about convincing. So just, I want you guys to understand that you to double your output, follow up on the people and the follow-ups versus the lists and you'll do well. Yeah. Cause not uh, you, and if you understand the principle rule that timing is everything, especially in wholesaling, you, you have the right arrow and you've shot it at the right house, meaning a motivated teller. They're just not quite ready to move on with that property. So you spend all the time, the money, the energy, the cold calling is put the time and effort on the follow-up because a lot of times the follow-up is mostly phone calls and text. And I told you, I've waited two to four years for a deal. Like it doesn't really cause it. You have to pay attention and put it in your CRM, but you never know. Just like when he made that extra cold call the other day, got one deal, 70 K discount. It's that's how you got to do it. Follow-up is huge and it's often overlooked. Look at your dead leads and just like when you run out of leads, just go through your dead leads and then the follow up because it's timing. So when they're ready to sell, are you going to be on? Do not depend on like a little sticky note or a card or a mailer postcard on the fridge. Just reach out to them. And it's, it's huge, guys.